Hey guys, CT Stealth here, and I just got a question that's actually pretty, it's a pretty good one. Um, uh, based off my Autorigay garage door in Maya, I was asked about the motion path and how to make it be able to cycle. And what uh, ATV Pro here, aka Alfonso, he was asking um, how I could make it cycle and what would be the best approach and how to do that. So. Uh, this is a video, a video response to that, and what I have here is I actually have his Maya file, and I've, um, I just want to be sure, but uh, I've created one that already cycles based on this controller. So what I'm going to do here, and he'll he'll notice that uh, he's missing some few uh, threads here. I've hidden them to make it easier to see, and. Another thing you had was you had some bones as well as uh, stuff in this hypershade. So if I select these hypershade windows, I'm not exactly sure what you were going to do with all this. This is rigid bodies. Um, typically rigid bodies are used for dynamics such as particles, explosions, and contact on contact meshes forming collisions. So I'm not exactly sure what he was going to do with that. Probably something, if I had to guess, would be something with deformations. However, it prevented me from actually creating this to rotate properly because uh, of the way it was set up. So I'm not exactly sure what you're going to do with that, so if you're going to do something with it, you can uh, edit it to your liking after you do this. Um, so anyway, uh, first of all, as you can see, I do have one that is cycling. Um, your curve isn't showing up here. I'm, I, I want to guess it's connected, but I'm not sure. It just it might be a UI error. I get that a lot. So if it is in fact connected, which it looks like it is because it goes past it, then um, then it, it should be okay. So first of all, make sure the path is continuous. And secondly, I'm going to, I've got this uh, extra thread. I've broken the connections so it doesn't have any of your uh, hyper shaded stuff. It doesn't have any of this. I just deleted the rigid body and got rid of it. Um, and don't know what you're going to do with that. But, um, so first I'm going to assign it to the motion path, which uh, is right here. Animate motion path, attach to motion path, and it kind of comes off wonky. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fix that. I'm going to go to the motion path, world up type vector. And I'm going to make this zero and see how the um, actual influences are occurring. And okay, so I got it flat. Now I need to twist it. So I think it's the side twist by 90. Nope, not that one. Is it this one? Yes. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to go to the channel box and go down to the motion path and the U, val U value. I'm going to break the connections so it's no longer keyframed because essentially all that is is just a keyframe. Now I'm going to. Uh, grab the U value and move it into position which I'm just gonna guess and say it's about right there and I'm gonna grab my little controller here I'm going to uh, select them to go to the uh, set driven key it's under animate set driven key so pull up my window and load the driver the circles the driver uh, the tread is the driven and select the motion path and reload it so you get the motion path in the U value. Okay, so now the U value is set to 0 0.05. I can set the neutral position. So I'm going to set uh, this circle is rotating around the X, as you can see. I'll make that a little bigger. So as you can see, if I rotate it this way, that's the rotate X. So rotate X and UV value. And I'm going to key. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to the max position value, which, uh, let's see, I want it to be, uh, let's just make it like roughly right there. Okay, so that's 0 0.99. And I'm going to key that. All right, what I'm going to get is I'm actually going to get, um, did that not key? I don't think that keyed. Uh, where's the, let me hide that other one. That one's the motion path one. So let me hide this one. 
Okay. So let's see that key. Nope. That's the wrong. Oops. Okay. Um, so now I should... That one's not moving. So the neutral position did not get set right, so I'm going to go 0 0.05 back over here because that was the UV value. I'm going to key this again. Okay. And it's still not moving. So 0.99. And then I'll key... Oh, that's why. I'm, I'm such an idiot. I forgot to rotate the controller. <laughs> I forgot to rotate the controller before I tweaked the motion path. So now let's do this again. Alright, so I'll key this. And now what I should get, yes, I should get a movement. Alright, now the first one won't, um, looks like it's catching up to it, but you can always fix that. Um, it's it's not continuing like this one is. Now there's a special feature within the graph editor because essentially the, what this is is these are actual keyframes and when you set the motion path I could click play and it'll just follow the motion path throughout the time slider. But if you go to the um, animation editors and go down to the graph editor you'll see a line like this. Now what I've done is I've turned on Call it something called infinity. It's in view infinity. And then you go over to the curves and you go to pre infinity and there's these list of options. Each one of the op options are different um, for walk cycles and stuff. Like if you're creating a sine wave, you'd use an oscillate. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a cycle. And so what it essentially does is we're going to set both of those cycles and you can see that uh, we get this line that's constant. This dotted line just means that this point starts immediately right here after, so it's not like a straight dip. And now, when I turn the controller, it should be infinite, which it is. All right, so um, that's how you make it inf infinite. You know, just small tweak in the graph editor. Infinity. Uh, that's my script. Completely ignored that. Um, so yeah, it's just the pre and post infinity. Uh, I hope that helps, and uh, good luck with that, whatever you're doing.